This is going to be the status video of the theme park layout here in 2022. As you can see, I've turned off the layout, but I'm going to show you small videos as I'm going through all of the modules in order to give you an update of what has been going on this year and what is coming up. Already here from the corner, you can see that there's actually a new corner module. It is powered by a motor hidden down here, an Excel motor. There are building instructions for this module and they are in the description below. The Poke Cola has the straws and the ice cubes that are moving. When it's running here in this layout, you can hear it's clicking a lot down here when there's no passenger going past. I prefer it not to be that noisy, so I really want to not have these two modules linked together, which means I have to motorize the big time price. And as you can see right now, behind the big time price, there's no space for motorization, so it has to be in the module, so I also have to update the building instructions. When it comes to the big wheel, that's actually an update this year, since I showed you it the last time, and that is this section right here is actually lifting with the rest when it is moving people inside, which is also why you saw in the past couple of videos this module didn't really have the problems with people chipping out right here. So now they, get, now they get nicely into the gondolas, but I still want to improve this module. I want to have braces in the gondola so they're not so open as they are right now. And that's really a thing that might require an additional motor and some kind of mechanism here in order to activate those braces. So you might see an update of this module where I'm either changing to something different than NXT or using NXT and try to be clever in some way. And I might also be removing these support braces right here because they are not so pretty and I don't really think they are needed. But hopefully there's going to be some updates next year in this module. Moving up here in the back, you can see some new features. So I built a lot of lakes. I didn't really talk about them yet, but they are simple lake fields or lake plots that I'm putting in in order to fill out the space here in the middle. And there are end plates, there are straight, corner, one by one, and also these T fork right here. And that's all in order to just make some decorations, just like the walls here, the castle walls are also just really decorations, but I'm using them to hide the uh, power supplies for all of the modules that are just running Excel motors. The same is going on with the private hitch over here, which is also just running a power supply that I'm controlling using this little black Technic lift arm right there. Moving here to the front, we have our Victorian lights or street lamps. And they are actually, if you look closely, you can see they are glowing the dark faces from I think some Harry Potter set. The uh, duck chute has been upgraded because it had a it had some troubles in the past couple of uh, events that I went through. So what I have done is that now I have three of the wheels down here are motorized. And when you're clapping, it doesn't just allow you to clap twice in a row. It actually has a cool down before it runs again. And in that way, I expect the track nut to pull up and make the module inoperable. Hopefully that's going to be a change that is working in favor for this module. The bouncy castle. The oldest module in the, in the whole layout has been upgraded to have this new kind of exit that you have seen in many other modules where I'm actually connecting two tracks right here. You can see using the small 16 tooth gears. And that is so that when a person gets out here, they don't get stuck underneath of the track trying to get out. They slide out much more easily. And that has been an advantage you've also seen in many other modules, such as the big wheel, it has it as well, if you look at the track. But you also see it in the merry-go-round, the parasol chairs, and even the plane flyer has that upgrade to the track. The uh, haunted house, which I presented recently, does not have that feature because it has the track that goes up and down here in the middle, just like the coffee shop. And here is a module that has been upgraded quite a lot, Mr. Wally Isis. It has been upgraded because the uh, LEGO Technic supercar mechanism I was using in order to change between those three states actually didn't really work that well or reliably in the long run. So I have made a completely new mechanism that is requiring much less tension and thus is much more reliable. Here at the corner we have the observation tower and even that has been upgraded because it is now powered in the module 
instead of being powered by the track and that makes it have less vibrations when it is running. The plane flyer has also been updated. Okay, everything here has been updated. First of all, it's called plane flyer, not plane flyers, as I said in the initial video, because yeah, I was mistaken. There's also a new sensor. If you look over here, you can see there's a new touch sensor underneath of this airplane. The new sensor over here makes it so that it's less likely for the whole module to incorrectly not detect that the plane has been moved down and then keep on moving down, which is causing it to destroy itself or has done so many times and that takes a long time to repair. So hopefully this additional sensor is going to help with that. I have also improved how high the uh, individual airplanes are compared to each other or in relationship to each other. If you look closely in here, you can now see there is a white 24 tooth gear, a clutch gear. I'm not using the clutch function of the gear. I am, however, using that it is hitting an eight tooth gear right here. And that gear is making sure that the height of the airplane in this side can be at the same height as the airplane in the other side because of the corkscrew in the middle is moving half a tooth down when you're going across. The overlay picture illustrates this. Take a look at the red cross axles. They represent the height of the two lifters and the two sides. And as you can see, because of the two gears on the left, you get the same height of lift on both sides. Coconut Shine has also been updated. It is now using a different mechanism that is using gravity in order to reset the uh, lifting mechanism that is going down underneath here. And it is also having a bigger cooldown, which makes it more reliable to pull the coconuts up once they have been pushed down. The Marigo round was presented recently, so nothing has changed there. But we do have a new entrance. So instead of having this big entrance I showed at one event, I'm now working on this new one here. This new one is going to be interactive, so there's actually a distance sensor right here that people can interact with, and it's going to light up so that you can see what's going on. And then the uh, people who are visiting can make people either take the outer or the inner track in order to see, or in order to make people overtake each other. So that might be a fun addition. The parasol chairs is also a recent addition, so you recently saw the presentation video after that one. Coffee shop. That is one of the modules that has not been changed much since the last time. I've just changed a bit of how the bricks are built in the base of it so that it's easier to move wires in and out of it. But that's a minor addition. And that is it for the modules that are currently in the layout here. But let's take a look at what is coming up. So I also have a bit of things over here. This is the latest shop that I'm working on. Maybe you can guess what is going on here. There's definitely a lot of gears and some interesting trigger mechanisms. So let's see what this is going to be. And over here, I have finally found the missing, or some of the missing parts from the space shuttle. And you can see I have here a module that I don't really know yet which ride it's going to be. So that is also going to be a surprise for me. And other than that, I have some spare corner modules in order to put into the layout if any more of those. And over here in the back, it's just a loop coaster that I want to build into the layout, but not as a loop coaster. And then we have some, let's take a look here, the old theme park sign is lying over here in case that I need the parts for that. That's it for this year. I hope that you enjoy following this project. So take care, have fun, and I'll see you next time.